Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is June 28th, and today we're taking a look at the slow pressure system that finally brought us an end to our heat wave, at least for western portions of Washington, Oregon, and British Columbia here. And this is going to bring some light precipitation across portions of Washington, British Columbia today. There is some instability. You might get some thunderstorms mainly into British Columbia today as well. But the big temperature change for today is finally here. We're going to be quite a difference from yesterday where we're going to be probably 20 to 25 degrees below what we were as of yesterday. SeaTac did hit 91. Another fairly warm day for portions of eastern Washington, but not like what we had yesterday. So diving right into things here, you can see our heat advisories are gone for the Pacific Northwest. That marine air is just flooded into the region, ending those. You can see some still down for the valleys of California and for portions of Southern California, but generally quiet around the rest of the country right now. A little bit of flooding concern still for New Mexico. The monsoon moisture continues there. And this is for Spokane, uh, wind gust 2530, localized gust of 40, just heads up for rough lakes and secure loose items. Watch out for the cold water over there too as well. There might still might be some people out and about off in the river, so watch out for that. And you can see here Seattle. We hit 90 and 91 the last two days. The record highs previous to last year were 90 and 92. So we would have tied the record high there on Sunday and just missed it by one degree yesterday. But of course, since we had that heat wave last year, we're probably never going to touch those records, uh, probably during uh, most of our lifetimes. So checking this out, this is a GFS showing Seattle 31 degrees colder, 24 hour temperature change here. You can see how the marine air is just flooded into the region and really just brought a, a pretty dramatic into this heat wave a nice diagram here of just showing how much the temperature has cooled down in the 24 hour period as of this afternoon now checking out the her here you can see there is a little bit of precip just some mainly some light showers but there's better instability up in through british columbia here and maybe northern portions of the cascades uh okanagan highlands as we go through the day today and on in through tomorrow and checking here, this is the European, uh, the lightning potential. You can see this mainly exists also in the British Columbia as well. So looks like it misses Washington and Oregon on this round coming up. We may get some chances here, though, coming up in the extended. We'll take a look at that as we look like we might have a storm system moving our way towards the 4th of July weekend coming up here. And this is total precipitation. You can see um, some decent amounts for the Olympic Mountains there. But most of the, the big winner here is British Columbia getting some nice precipitation here as we go through this evening into tomorrow morning all the way out towards Alberta. Now checking out, this is North America. You can see Alaska, Washington, Oregon, California here. And this is three-hour precipitation and then mean sea level pressure. So I wanted to show you guys this as we go into the future a little bit here. You can see the system moving through here today and this afternoon, again, mostly for British Columbia. As it moves through the region here, we kind of dry out a bit. Then we kind of keep some troughing around as we go in towards the weekend. And then we develop a system, as you can see, the precipitation picking up again as we go towards July 3rd and July 4th. Now, if we bounce this out to six hours, we can go out a little bit further here. And as we go on into July 4th, you can kind of see this system bringing some precip for western Washington, maybe extreme northwest Oregon, British Columbia getting some good precipitation amounts too. So we're going to have to watch the system here. The models have been waffling back and forth on its strength and exact position here. So we'll continue to watch this um, chance for some active weather coming up to here this 4th of July weekend on into the 4th of July here. And as you can see here, as we go through July 5th, still some precipitation around for the area on in through the extent as that troughing continues. So we'll continue to watch that as we get closer to it. Things can change pretty quickly this time of year, especially just small changes in the general trough position can make big differences for um, the actual weather at the surface here in the Pacific Northwest, especially in the summer months. Uh, now looking here, 18,000 feet, 500 millibar general trough and re uh, mean ridge position here. This is yesterday afternoon's European. Here goes that trough that really cooled us down. Building some ridging for a couple of nice days. And how far will this next trough get in on us, though? That is the big question here. The models were holding it off uh, a day or two ago, a little bit further offshore. But now it's kind of impacting the Pacific Northwest a bit more as we go through the 4th of July weekend on into early that week. 4th of July is on a Monday here coming up this year. And as we push through the extended there, you can see that troughing kind of uh, hangs around off the Pacific Northwest through the 10-day period here on the European too. So we'll have to continue to watch this. We might continue our active weather on into early July here. Checking out Seattle-Tacoma these two days with a marine push and the nice onshore flow keep us cool. Then we warm back up again here Thursday, Friday before that potential trough as we move into this weekend and on in through the 4th of July. 
and then Alf and Fantasyland here. I'm not going to put too much stock in that as of yet. Here's a GFS showing the same thing. Nice warm up there Friday, Saturday, then Sunday. The cool down starts as the trough gets close to us on Monday, 4th of July. Looks kind of chilly here. And according to the operational run, might only get up towards, you know, 60, low 60s here for some of the, for Seattle, Tacoma area. And GFS for Portland showing the same thing, that potential for the trough and then the extended we're not going to put much stock into just as of yet. Seattle Tacoma, you can kind of see as we get towards July 3rd and 4th, some of the ensemble members are picking up on that precipitation potential here. So that's something we're going to watch here the next few days. We'll see how this uh, forecast evolves. So here we're going to take a look at the most recent ENSO forecast here. This is kind of showing these potential La Nina conditions as we move into the future here. You can see the ensemble mean showing us to be in a La Nina pattern here until at least about January. Then it shows kind of a transition towards the neutral conditions. It's kind of unusual. We usually hang out in La Nina conditions through the winter on into springtime before these uh, conditions across the Central Pacific transition. But you can see here, if you look closely, Hawaii, South America, New and Mexico here, you can see this classic La Nina pattern here. As this cold water is upwelling off the coast of South America has moved across the Central Pacific. This is where we measure these conditions, Nino 3.4 across the Central Pacific. And you can see this existing through August, September, October. October, November, December, January, February, still kind of showing that La Nina pattern though as it weakens as we go into January and February. So we'll just continue to watch this as we come up here. But right now the odds look like we are moving into our third consecutive La Nina year in a row here. Now taking a look at things here, this is um, how La Nina and El Nino affect seasonal pressure patterns and winds. Generally for La Nina winter, as we know, we've talked about it, the high pressure is kind of that highlighting characteristic of a La Nina here. Northwest flow, more variable jet stream potential for more Arctic outbreaks across the Pacific Northwest. You can see Washington here, Alaska, Hawaii there, and there's the lower 48. And for El Nino, it's a little bit different. You tend to get more of a low pressure out here over the Pacific Ocean here, bringing warmer conditions for us, less variable jet stream. It's more of a uh, a standard south southwest jet stream that moves onto the coast of North America here as the gradient is stronger across the central Pacific here versus over here in West Pacific during La Nina patterns. We usually have a stronger jet stream way out here. El Nino that's displaced out here a bit more. That's why California is wetter during El Nino winters. Now checking out here, this is El Nino. You can see here's the Central Pacific here. This would be South America, Mexico here. You can see the waters are warmer here. Warm water tends to bunch up off the coast of South America during El Nino conditions. And we enhance the convection here across the Central Pacific uh, region, El Nino 3.4 here. So the waters are going to be warmer, El Nino. And as we take a look here at La Nina, we have the reverse. We have this upwelling, this water being pulled away from South America. And then like a vacuum, it has to be replaced by something that's replaced by this colder water at, uh, beneath the surface here. And then you get this cooler water out over the Central Pacific. You can see Hawaii there. And as we measure the, those temperatures here, Nino 3.4, it's going to be colder. And that gives us La Nina conditions. When As we drag this water across, the surface water is warmed up daily by the sun. And this brings warmer water out into the Western Pacific here. You get enhanced convection here, and this kind of brings a stronger jet stream off the coast of Asia here, and it tends to bring us downstream ridging off over the Pacific Ocean here that brings us our more variable jet stream to the Pacific Northwest. So as we look at neutral, it's a little bit more like La Nina. You tend to get kind of the typical convection here over western uh, the western pacific ocean here but generally the temperatures are you know of course they're not el nino or la nina there they're just kind of normal conditions there although we don't tend to hang out in neutral conditions that long we're always kind of between a phase of uh, la nina and uh, el nino now, taking a look here at the three to four day temperature outlooks, this is from June 24th. Here you can see the next three to four weeks, Pacific Northwest below and generally kind of average precipitation here. Six to 10 day temperature outlook, look at the West, California, some below average temperatures here. Check out Texas, man. Uh, so this was issued June 27th here, and this is the 6 to 10 day period precipitation wise. So this kind of highlights our 4th of July storm here, kind of showing that signal there for some above average precipitation. You can see the monsoon moisture across New Mexico and Arizona here highlighted as this was issued June 27th. 8 to 14 day, what else would you expect for the Pacific Northwest? Below average temperatures, hot out there through the southern plains. 
And yeah, so that's what we're looking at, folks. So we'll continue to watch that La Nina pattern as it comes up here. It'd be a historical third La Nina in a row. It's only happened twice and I believe about the last 50 years now. So we'll continue to watch that and we'll continue to watch this storm and see where this trough is going to set up coming up through this uh, later this next weekend here. It's going to affect our 4th of July plans dramatically. You know, it's not much fun having a, a rainy 4th of July too much. Unless you get thunderstorms and maybe you can get some fireworks and lightning in a photo shot and send it to me on Twitter if you like. But yeah, if you guys are liking these videos, click like, click subscribe. We'll continue to watch the forecast. It evolves coming up this weekend, but the active weather may continue on into this weekend into early next week as we just dropped right back out of this heat wave. You can see these marine clouds just all the way in the portions of western Washington. Oregon is slow spinning over the region, cooling down even eastern portions nicely today too. And watch out for that thunderstorm threat up through British Columbia today, some unstable air up there. So yeah, um, we'll do this again tomorrow and I'll talk to you guys then.